All right, welcome everybody. It is the top of the hour, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to today's webinar, Top 10 Google Tools to Grow Your Business. We are so glad that you're here with us today, whether you're joining live or viewing the on-demand recording. Um, I'm Hannah White, the Managing Director at Main Street America. And for those of you who are not familiar with Main Street America, we lead a national network of grassroots organizations committed to strengthening their main streets through community economic development and preservation. And while many of our resources support community leaders and business serving organizations, we also provide tools and education for small business owners within these commercial corridors, leading to projects like our Grow with Google Digital Coaches Partnership, which brings us together today. Just a few words of background before we dive in. Uh, launched in 2017, Grow with Google helps people across the United States grow their skills, careers, and businesses by offering free tools, trainings, and events. So far, they have provided free digital skills training to an amazing 8 million Americans and counting through a network of 8,500 partners. And through our partnership with Grow With Google, we have built a team of 10 digital coaches to lead free trainings and empower small businesses with skills to grow. The partnership, this partnership grew out of a need for increased tailored support for small business owners coming out of the pandemic. And you, you all know more than anyone that most businesses had to pivot during COVID. And at Main Street America, we conducted a survey to see how we could help and found that the most among the most pressing needs, businesses were looking for more digital tools to survive and thrive. Outside of these virtual workshops, our coaches also provide in-person training to small business owners in rural communities across the country. And these virtual or in-person trainings come in the form of group classroom settings and one-on-one -on -one consultations. To find out more information about the program, to watch all of our on-demand trainings, please visit mainstreet.org slash how we can help slash grow with Google. Today, our wonderful team will walk you through a number of tools and resources that will help you take your business to the next level, no matter what stage of growth you're in. You will hear from two of our Grow with Google digital coaches. First up is Joshua Miller, our Pennsylvania coach. Joshua is a freelance communication specialist that works closely with individuals and small businesses to promote growth and business branding. You'll also hear from Tiara Norwood, our North Carolina coach. Tiara has a background in business and economic development from previous roles with the City of Rocky Mount, North Carolina Department of Commerce, and as a director of the Nash Community College Small Business Center. She is also the owner of Ajon's Professional Solutions, which provides cutting edge goal oriented marketing services. Before we dive in, I want to point you toward a few other free resources available for small business owners, entrepreneurs, and business serving organizations. First, you can reach out directly to any of our Grow with Google coaches. Today's coaches contact information is listed here, uh, or you can visit the Grow with Google coaches webpage, and you'll also be receiving a follow-up email after this session with more options for connecting with our coaches. Second, we invite you to check out our recently launched Main, Streets in Main Street Business Insights podcast. Um, it's available wherever you get your podcasts, and we invite you to join us weekly as we hear the powerful stories and gain insights from America's small business owners and entrepreneurs. And lastly, if you are a small business owner, we invite you to take our small business survey, which will help Main Street America shape our programming and communications to better support you and your small businesses. I'll pause just a moment so you can access those, uh, those QR codes to access the resources. All right, and lastly, we have just a couple of housekeeping notes to run through before we get going. First, this webinar is being recorded to view later and we will add the recording to our website and YouTube channel and we'll email it out to all registrants and attendees. Second, if you are watching this webinar with a group, whether live or via the recording, we ask that you use the QR code to the right to list all viewers to help us track attendance. That would be super helpful to us. Um, and we'll, we'll pause here for you to, to scan that QR code. Um, also, please note that closed captioning is available. Click You can click enable or disable uh, within Zoom based on your preferences. 
And lastly, we do not have chat available today, uh, but please feel free to reach out to the coaches directly using the email addresses listed here. Um, with that, let's dive into the presentation and I will pass it over to Joshua to kick things off. Thanks, Hannah. Um, and I'm just going to make one correction. I believe for this, we did turn on the chat feature um, for this workshop here. So if you do have a question, um, feel free or for throughout the presentation, feel free to drop it in the chat. We will do our best to answer that question um, at the end of this presentation if time allows. If we are unable to get to your question, you can join one of the three of us coaches. Um, on the screen, you'll see some pre-scheduled office hours that we can discuss those questions in more detail. That's okay. All right, I am going to, we're gonna jump into the webinar here. I'm gonna turn my camera off just so we can pay attention to the screen. And here we go. Let's take a look at the first five, sorry, skipped a slide there. Welcome to the webinar, Unleashing the Power of Google Tools, the, the top 10 tools for small business success. My name is Josh Miller, and I'm excited to be here with you today. Whether you are a small business owner, entrepreneur, or marketer, you know that Google is one of the most powerful tools you have at your disposal. But with so many different tools and features available, it can be hard to know where to start. That's why we're here today in this webinar. We will be sharing the top 10 Google tools that you can use to organize and grow your business. By the end of this webinar, you'll have a clear understanding of how to use Google tools to stay organized, collaborate with others, attract more customers, increase sales, and grow your business. Let's take a look at the first five tools that we're going to discuss that can help you stay organized and collaborate with others. First, we have Google Drive, which is a cloud-based storage service that allows you to store files online and access them from anywhere. Next, we have Google Docs and Sheets, which are free tools that allow you to create, edit, and share documents and spreadsheets online. We then have Google Slides, which is a free presentation tool that allows you to create and share presentations online and off. Last, we will have a, where we will look at Google Meet, which is a free high quality video conferencing app that is designed to keep you connected with your friends, family, and colleagues. So let's jump right into things with Google Drive. Google Drive is an online location where you can safely store digital files that you create, share, use, and download. This service is included for free with your Google account. Google Drive is a great place to store important documents such as contracts, invoices, and other marketing materials. This will help keep your documents organized and secure. Using Drive makes it easy to share files with clients and partners. This can be helpful for collaborating on projects, providing quotes, or sending proposals. This will, help, this will also help protect your data in case of a hard drive failure or other disaster. One tip for collaborating with the team, create, plan on creating a team drive. A team drive is a shared folder that you can that can be used by a group of people. This way, this is a great way for small businesses to have to collaborate on projects and share files. When you store files on Google Drive, you can access them anywhere, anytime that you are connected to the internet. You can also access Google Drive as well as many of the other individual apps from your mobile device. As you see on the screen here, this shows Google Drive, the Google Drive icon on an iPhone. And if you know there's a good chance you're going to be without internet, internet access, you can turn on the available offline settings for files you think you might need to be able to access while you're offline. To take a look at Google Drive, first we need to be signed into our Google account. If you don't have a Google account, you can set one up for free. If your business or employer uses Google Workspace, you may have an email address that doesn't look like a Gmail address, but it still is a Google account. So if you're not sure on this, the best thing to do is check with your um, team at work. Once signed in, click the Google Apps icon here, and you'll see all the Google applications that come with your account. Now let's select the Google Drive and take a look at a few of the features. First, let's take a look at some of the main features of your drive, file storage. This is the area where your files and folders will be stored. You can click on any of these folders or files to open them up. Next, the new button is where you'll click to create a new file or folder or other um, documents. The menu on the left side gives you a quick options, gives you quick options for sorting through your files. And the search bar allows you to search for a file or folder by typing in words from its title or the file itself. To access your Google tools, you will select new and choose the application you are wanting to create. For this example, we will look at a blank Google document. You will also have the option to create a document or sheets from a template. 
Remember, as soon as you open this document, it will save automatically in your drive, so there's no need to remember to save your work. Let's create a new folder by clicking the same new button from before in the upper left-hand corner of your browser window, and you'll be prompted to then title that folder. One way to stay organized is to use the start feature um, for items to allow quick access to find files and folders that you are regularly working on. To add a star to a file that's already open, just click the star icon to the file's title. Now let's take a look at how you can star a folder or file or folder from your device. Right first, right click on that folder and then select add a star. Once you've done that, you'll be able to select starred items from the menu on the left-hand side um, to see all the files and folders that you have starred. There will be times that you no longer need documents, um, files or folders, um, and you wanna save space within your Google Drive. You can delete these items. To delete, you can simply click on one of the folders or files and drag it into the trash can on the left side of your screen. And another way to move files or folders into the trash can is by right-clicking and then selecting delete. Once you move a file or folder into trash, it will remain there for 30 days, at which point it will be permanently deleted. You can also empty your trash at any time to permanently delete uh, contents earlier. Remember, if you delete a folder, you will delete all of the files inside. So if you, if you decide to delete a folder, be sure to move any files that you may want to keep out of that folder before deleting it. If you decide that you don't want to, de if you don't want the folder to be deleted, you can click on the trash to open it up and you'll see that you have your discarded files and folders inside. If you right click on that folder, It'll open up a menu that'll give you the options to restore or delete um, forever. Here you can select restore to restore that document into your uh, Google Drive. If you're looking for something in Google Drive, you can simply type in one or more of the words from the file into the search bar at the top of your drive and any of the files or folders that include those words will appear. Let's talk about sharing your folders and files. When you store files in your drive, you can give different people access to different files. For example, you created a draft agenda for a big event and you want everyone on the event planning committee to have access to this agenda. That's the path I'm showing you on the left-hand side of the screen here. But you also have a budget file and you only want one other person to have access to that path, to that. That's the path you can see on the right side of the screen. Even better, you can give different people different levels of access to the file. People can either have access to edit a file, comment on that file without editing, or just view it with the ability to comment or make with or without making changes. You can also give people access to, to a complete folder and store a um, group of files in that folder. In this situation, everyone who has access to the folder will have access to the files within that folder. And yes, you can give access to people outside of your organization. This makes it perfect for sharing information with your clients or members. To share a file or folder, you want to right click, select share. Now type in the email address of the person that you want to share this folder with and click done. You can then choose the level of edit access to give this person such as editor, commenter, or viewer. You can add a note if you'd like to when sending this message and then you're ready to click send. To access files or folders that, have, that, to, that others have shared with you, you will want to click on the shared with me menu on the left. You'll see that you'll see what has been shared with you and who has shared it with you and the date that it was shared. If any time you want to switch back to view the items that you have created, just click my drive. Now let's take a look at Google Docs and Sheets. Google Docs is a free web-based program for creating and editing documents. You can use Google Docs to write almost any text-based document, such as a letter, a resume, work proposal, meeting minutes, notes, or even a book. What's great about these tools in Google is it lets you start with a blank file, or you can start off with one of the templates that each tool provides. You can, you can even add um, or create a default template to match your organization's style. Once you create a new blank document or template, you will want to title it. This will help you find it when you want to open it up later. To title your document, click on the words untitled document in the upper left corner and type, then type in your new title. This is a look at um, Google, the Google Docs toolbar. This toolbar, which you'll find at the top of every Google Doc, contains the buttons with shortcuts to some of the most commonly performed actions. 
We'll use the toolbar to perform formatting for the next several minutes, but it's it's got a lot of great features that I won't have time to cover every single one of today. Um, to read what each button does say, just hover over it and it, ho hover over it with the cursor, and it'll tell you what that um, what that button does. Uh, I want to sh uh, to show you a feature that makes collaboration much easier here. Once you create a file, you might want some feedback from other people. I already mentioned you can share files with other people. And here's how you can add comments to your files and ask others to contribute to them. First, click or click on or highlight the word or phrase you want to comment. In this example, we used have you started looking for a replacement. There are a couple different ways to then add a comment. I recommend going to the top of the screen and finding the plus icon. Um, and you'll be able to add comment from there. Click that plus icon and you'll get a little pop up where you can then type in your comment. When you do that, everyone who has access to this file can see that comment that was made, but you can also alert or assign someone to the comment. Um, if you want to tag someone in the comment by using the plus or the at sign and then their email address, that person will then be alerted. You can see an example um, of the of a typed comment here that was addressed to Randy. Once you do that, you've given the option to assign the comment to that person as well. This comment is assigned to Pamela, so now that she knows she's responsible for answering and resolving this comment. When you alert or assign someone a comment, or when, when you alert or assign a comment to someone, they'll get an email notification. They can go into that document, they can read the comment, reply back, make changes, and resolve it if they wish. Any resolved comments will disappear from the sidebar of the actual file, but all the communication is stored in the comment area, which can be accessed through the small gray callout box next to the larger blue square button. This process works the same way in Google Sheets and in Google Slides. Um, when you are finished with your files and you wanna save into another format such as PDF, you have that option. If you are in Google Sheets, if, sorry, Google Sheets or Slides, you would also be able to download those files into other similar spreadsheets or presentation types. And in case you were wondering, you can also open up those files um, that are built in other tools like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint inside Google Drive. You do that by going to File, then Open. As I mentioned earlier, um, you may want to have access to some of these files offline. The Make Available Offline feature will allow you to access, edit, and save work in the files you indicate when you don't have internet connection. But you do need to set this up while you have the internet connection. In the screenshot here, I'm showing you how to go to the File menu, scroll down to Make Available Offline, and click Enable. Be sure to enable this feature for any files you think you'll need offline before you get stuck without internet connection. Also, you may go do this on a device you'll want to access in the uh, to access that file offline. For example, if you want to be able to access um, a file on your phone, you'll need to go and make it available offline from your phone and adjust the setting on that device. Let's look at Google Sheets now. Do you track inventory, create budgets, manage projects, or analyze data within your job? Google Sheets is a powerful tool that can be used by small businesses to save money, collaborate, collaborate more effectively, and tackle all of these tasks. Google Sheets is easy to use, even for people who are not familiar with spreadsheets, and it's constantly being updated with new features and functionality. Let's take a look at how one example that you can use Google Sheets for your business with creating a project tracker. This image on the right shows a computer screen containing a basic project tracker containing categories for tasks, status, start, due dates, notes, and completion. This spreadsheet includes some of the basic categories, such as those tasks, status of the project, um, or the progress of the task, the date which in the task started, the task's due date, the owner of that task, who is the person taking responsibility for it, a column for additional notes to record um, information and comments, and a column that shows when the task has been completed. As you move forward with this project, fill in the spreadsheet with the information you'll need to manage. The image shows a project tracker with some information typed into it. Make your track tracker more specific. Enter the name of the task owner, the person responsible for each task in the uh, appropriate column. You can then use this column to keep track of tasks you assign and easily gauge how much work each team member has, has to do. Finally, um, list at least a few of the dates you can record. Um, you can then record that date when you start a task and when you plan to finish it as well. In this sample tracker here, we'll create a drop-down menu that allows you to easily select a progress of the task. This image on the slide shows a spreadsheet tracker. In the status column, a user has added a drop-down menu showing different options to mark a task status. Um, in it, adding the drop-down menu will allow you to save time in the long run and keep your file organized with consistent phrases. You can create one of these yourself by using the data validation. Another way you might wanna collaborate with your team is to add a comment to include someone in the conversation. 
For example, you should ask a team member how long they think it'll take, um, how long they think the task will take, and they can let you know when they encounter any problems. This slide shows a user adding a comment to one cell in the spreadsheet. Let's say one of the tasks is close to its due date. Imagine you want to check in with the task owner to see whether it's on track. Select that cell that contains the due date, right click and select add comment. Write a short reminder or question and task and as you choose that comment. And you also have the ability again to use the at or plus symbol to tag somebody. When you add a comment, you can also designate someone in your team specific to a specific owner of an issue. To do this, again, we'll type that plus symbol and their email address. You can also ask for an update or if you have a specific task that your team member needs to do, you can mark a comment as an action item. This person will receive that email um, notification with your comment and they'll be responsible for completing that task and marking and complete once it's done so. All right, now imagine that you have planned your virtual event, you're using a to-do list and collaborated with your team to make an agenda for an event. Next, you might need a way of communicating effectively with a large group of people. You might wanna plan out what you're going to say during your presentation. For these situations and for plenty of others in the workplace, building a presentation in Google Slides is the best solution. Even if, even if your event is just a small team meeting, using a slide deck can keep everyone on track, on pace, and engaged. Now let's take a look at how to use how to use a presentation to share your progress or ideas at work. You can start from a blank slide deck, or as everything else, you guessed it, you can choose one of um, for, choose one from many of the uh, several templates available. As with uh, our other projects, we're going to start off with a template um, to help some of the overall design and basic elements. So click from the from your drive, you'll select new Google Slides and from a template. Open and select a, tem a template that best fits your project. Once again, your template opens up in a new tab and automatically saves to your Google Drive. As you can see, every template includes pre-designed layouts. Uh, layouts can include pre-arranged text boxes, formatting, um, and slides that will make suggestions for how to use each layout. You can select different layouts to present different information like a main point, important data, or a caption. To do this, click the uh, new slide plus uh, button and select a new layout that helps best uh, represent the information that you want to share in part of that. As you build out your presentation, you may want to include some non-photo visual images. Adding illustrations and videos can keep the presentation interesting and help grab your audience attention. You might use photos to introduce your team to the audience, or you can link a chart or graph from Google Sheets to show progress or explain a budget. To add these elements, access the uh, insert menu button, um, choose the kind of visual element that you'd like to include, and add a visual, um, if you want to add a visual like a photo or a video, dire video directly from Google Drive, or you can search one on the web. Um, and if you want to find an uh, image that suits your presentation on the web, you can uh, select search the web. Make sure that anything you use, you have the right to uh, the right to use that image. When you search for an image directly within uh, from Slides application, the images returned in your search results automatically will be free for use. At this point, you've built a slide deck to support your presentation. You've selected your layout, you've customized text and other visuals to enhance it. Now you might wanna share the slide deck with your team to get their input, or you can make it available to everyone who'll be in that audience. You can even embed the presentation on a web page. To access these settings, you can use the share icon, just like you did from the Google Docs or Sheets. Uh, type of colleagues, email address, and decide what kind of access you wanna give them, um, and decide, you know, uh, so if you need to enter a comment there, um, and then you can click share. Now let's take a look at Google Meet, which is a video conferencing program that comes with every single Google account. Video conferencing allows you to have meetings with people using your computer or your mobile device. You can use Google Meet for work, family, social gatherings, or work. You can have one-on-one -on -one meetings with, you can meet with the group, you can give presentations, interview for jobs, uh, lead trainings, have a class reunion, and, and there's plenty of other examples. If you have a Gmail account, then you have access to this version of Google Meet at no cost. If you do not have a Google account, um, you do not need a Google account to participate in a Google Meet. However, you do have to have a Google account um, to host one, and then you will need the uh, meeting organizer or someone from the organization to grant you access if you're coming from a non-Google uh, account. 
If you're part of an organization that has a uh, business version of Google Meet, which is included in the Google Workspace account, the interface may look a little different than what we're going to uh, take a look at here. To start or schedule a Google Meet, we are uh, going to select the Meet icon, which looks like a video camera from the Google Apps menu. You will then select the new meeting and have three options to choose from. You can create a meeting from, you can create a meeting for later. You can start an instant meeting or schedule a Google schedule in Google Calendar. Let's take a look at scheduling um, one in Google Calendar. First, you're going to give your meeting a title. You're going to click on the date and choose the date when your meeting is to take place. Click on the time and the starting and ending time for that meeting. Now, click on the description and type a short description of what the meeting, if this is needed. Finally, um, to invite guests your meeting or to invite guests to your meeting, you'll click on the uh, words "Add Guest" and type their email addresses of the people you want to invite. You will see the invitees appear under the invitees appear under as guest. When you're done, you can click Save. The people who you invite will receive an email notification uh, letting them know about the event, including a link to join the meeting. When you save the meeting on your work calendar. Um, Everyone that you invited to the meeting will get uh, get an email invitation that looks just like the image on the screen here. Um, they'll have the option to then accept or decline that invitation. If you go back into the meeting on your own calendar, you'll then have um, access to see who replied yes and who has said no, or is who, who has not replied at all. Let's take a look at a few of the features um, once we have a meeting in progress. To start a chat, um, which is a great way to share links, uh, simply click on the chat button as you see in the bottom right part of the screen. Oops, sorry. Once the chat feature opens up, you can start typing. When you're ready for people to see your message, you can simply click enter or um, click the send icon. To share your screen, click the present now button in the toolbar at the bottom of the screen. A menu will pop up showing um, options for how you want to share your screen. You'll have the opportunity to choose uh, what you present, whether it's your entire screen or a window or a tab. If you choose to share your entire screen, anything you do on your computer screen will be visible to people in the call. That's important to know in case you have something personal uh, opened up within your uh, computer. If you choose to share a window or tab, they will only see the browser window or tab that you have selected. If you're presenting um, with one tab, it's the if you're presenting the, uh, with one tab is the best way if you want to show animations or have audio connected. Lastly, I want to show you where to edit. Um, additional settings within Google Meet. From the more options menu, if you simply click that and then click settings, it'll give you extra additional settings to customize your Google Meet experience. Now, I would like to hand things over to Tierra to discuss the next five tools. Hello, everybody. So I will be discussing the next five tools. We're going to kind of switch gears. We've talked about tools that you can use for organization and productivity. And now we're going to focus on some tools that just help you grow your small business. Um, so we'll talk about the Google Business Profile. We'll talk about Google Bard, Google Analytics, and the Google Search Console, as well as wrap it up with some Google Ad discussion. Um, I will jump off of camera and come back on screen at the end of the presentation. Um, so I did just mention the tools that we'll discuss. The first up is Google Business Profile. If you are a small business, then I hope that you already have a Google Business Profile um, because this helps you to get your local business online. Um, people who are searching for your products or services can find you when they're Googling it. Um, we'll talk about how you can use your Google Business Profile to repurpose some of your social media content, as well as how you can use your Google Business Profile for customer reviews and just building some credibility for your business. Um, I will mention that you can create this Google Business Profile yourself at no cost. So if you've ever received a call from an organization that says, hey, pay us to get your business on Google, don't do it. Remember this workshop and do it free yourself. Um, so we'll look at the anatomy of the Google Business Profile. Most of us have seen this before. Um, we have the business name. We are able to look at videos and photos from that business. Those quick links appear where we can, you know, quickly pull up maps and get directions to the business. We can call them, view their website, um, as well as check their hours, get contact information and location. 
Um, with the Google business profile, um, now that we know what the anatomy looks like, we need to talk about how to set it up. And again, it is free to set up your Google business profile. Um, you would go to google.com slash business, and then you'll see a blue button that pops up that says manage now. Um, the steps to setting up your business profile are very intuitive. They walk you through it step by step. Um, I will mention that the Google business profile is for local businesses. So if you have a e-commerce only business, then a Google business profile is not for you. Um, we want to put local businesses online so people in their, that area looking for those services and products can find them. Um, once you go through the process of creating a Google business profile, while you wait for verification, you are able to continue making edits until your profile is live. Um, you create, I mean, you do those edits right through the dashboard um, of the Google search. This is what the dashboard will look like. So you'll see we can edit, profile, read reviews, and et cetera. Um, once we click the edit profile button, um, we're able to update our business name, we can update the category that we originally chose, um, we can add a description to our business. Um, I will say Google uh, makes sure that we have the room on this Google profile to put all of the information that a business, I mean, that a consumer might want to see about a business while they're on that customer journey. Um, you can also update location hours. And then there's a section that says more. And once you click more, you'll see that they um, do allow you to identify with um, some of those attributes listed. So if you're an Asian-owned business, a woman-owned business, a disabled-owned business, you might not promote that throughout your branding of your business, but you can identify your business as whichever category directly on Google. So if anyone is searching to specifically work with a woman-owned business, even though it might not be throughout the branding on your website or anything, it is showing on. Google. Um, so after we have done those editing, this is my actual favorite part of the Google business profile and it's one of the least used. And so what I try to get people to think about with the updates is just repurposing your social media content um, because not everyone that's looking for your business is on social media. So with the add updates, if you click add update, you're able to not only um, add updates about the business, but you can also add special offers. Um, let's see, I'm sorry. Can we go back to that slide? Yeah, here we go. Um, so we're able to add updates about the business, but we're also able to offer um, different exclusive deals on um, our Google business profile, as well as our events because we have a lot of small business owners that host events. Um, this is another place that you can put your event so that you can put it in front of your potential audience. Um, and then with um, once we are you know, getting customers, they are becoming clients, they're purchasing products. Well, we want to send them over to our review section. Um, with, what you see right here is the option to read reviews, check your messages, as well as answer the Q&A. Um, so with the Q&A section, I like to mention that this is not exclusive for owners um, to just answer questions. Your Q&A section is open to anyone that wants to answer a question that someone has about your business. So I do recommend looking at that. Um, you know, if you see that someone's answering questions and maybe they're not answering them correctly, feel free to, you know, jump in and answer those questions because, again, the general public can answer questions in your Q&A section. Um, we do want more people to um, send their customers and clients over to Google to do reviews. And so the way that we ask for reviews, there's actually a button for it. And once we get to this page, we can share our review, um, share our link for people to do reviews for our business um, via email. We can do it via social. Um, and then there is a link. And I love using the link because we can take that link and create a QR code and print it out and just have it visible in our business. Um, we can use that link and 
put it at our in our email signature so that we're not having to remind ourselves to ask for reviews, but we're constantly asking for reviews. Um, it is best practice that, yes, we're asking for reviews, so when we get those reviews, whether they are negative or positive, we do want you to respond to all of your reviews. Thank your happy customers, as well as address the issues that might be um, brought up through a negative review. Uh, so the next tool we're going to talk about for business is Google Bard. And Google Bard is a new experimental AI tool that Google has. And if you're familiar um, with ChatGPT, it is a similar format. And so with ChatGPT and Google Bard, one of the biggest things about them is your e the ease in making content. And so you can actually use your Google Bard to develop content and SEO-friendly descriptions for your products and services. Um, and it makes it a lot easier instead of you spending hours and hours trying to develop content and make sure it has those keywords in it. Um, we can get a little bit of help through AI um, and the Google Bard tool is free to use. So we've talked about Google Business Profile, we've looked at Google Bard, and now we're going to talk about Google Analytics. And if you have a website, then you should be using Google Analytics because what Google Analytics does is this a free tool that allows you to understand your visitor behavior, see how customers are finding your site, as well as tracking and recording those conversions. Um, so you're able to add your business website to Google Analytics and track how the traffic comes there and what content people are really looking at at your site. Um, on this next slide, we'll talk about why you should use Google Analytics. And like I mentioned, we're able to really understand what website visitors are like and how they behave. Um, are they staying on the homepage, you know, to learn more? Are they clicking away and going, spending more time on your About Us page, but being able to really see that data? Um, we can learn what marketing strategies are working and which are not, um, because we can run reports and see where the traffic is coming to our um, website from. And so we might find that, um, we spend a lot of time on social media, but our traffic to our website is not coming from social media. It might be coming from Google. And that would help us make the decision that, hey, I think we should post more updates on our Google. We should keep our Google profile up to date because that's where most of our traffic is coming from. And ultimately, that helps you to make better decisions for your business. And this is Kind of the same thing, but again, we want to understand uh, what content the audience is interested in, use that information to create more content, as well as evaluating those channels to see which one is driving the most conversions, and then focusing our marketing campaigns on those channels based on the data. To get signed up for Google Analytics, you would go to g.co slash analytics, and there is a button that says get started today, and you click there and set up your property in the analytics account, in your analytics account. I will mention you'll be asked to either add a domain or a URL. If you add your domain, then Google is able to track um, how what's going on throughout the whole website. If you just add a URL, so maybe you add your domain slash shop, the only data that'll be being tracked is what's going to that direct page or that direct URL. So I would highly recommend adding your whole domain. And so now we'll talk about Google Search Console, um, which a lot of people are not familiar with Google Search Console, Console. But again, if you have a website, this is a tool that you should be using. Um, it's a no-cost tool, and it's designed to help you improve your site's performance in Google Search results. Um, another thing that I really love about the Google Search Console um, is that this allows Google to crawl your website and index your pages. So on this next slide, we'll just look at um, what you can use Google Search Console for. And again, this is confirming that Google can find and see your site. 
um, because there is a, a misconception that when someone is Googling a product or service, that Google is scouring the internet and looking at billions of sites to see which one to show them with the, you know, which one is most accurate. No, that's not how Google works. Um, so they already have a catalog of websites that have been indexed. So they're familiar with those websites and what those websites are offering. And so Google knows more about what content is on your site. Um, you can also submit a request to Google to check your site for new and updated content. So if you get your website indexed, but you add a new page, you can come back over to Search Console and request that they um, look at that new page. Um, you can also see how Google Search brings visitors to your sites. Um, I will say this is very helpful because you can actually see what people type in Google Search to be able to find your website. And so you can make, again, some informed business decisions based on that data. And you can also sign up to receive email alerts when um, Google encounters a problem accessing your site. Thank you. Alrighty, and so to sign up for Google Search Console, you would go to g.co slash search console, click add a website property, and then you'll see the option for the domain or the URL prefix. Again, the domain allows, um, you know, that reporting from the whole website, whereas the URL is a specific page. So to wrap up these five tools um, for growing your business online, we'll now talk a little bit about Google Ads, which is a pay-per-click model um, that advertisers can use to just show up on Google. Um, I know most people here have Googled something and seen um, these results at the top that come up first that say sponsored or say ad. And this is how you get your business um, at the top through an ad. So it, of course, it all starts with a Google search. And so the researcher will type a word or phrase into Google and that's called the search query. And then Google's algorithm creates a search results page that lists websites and other resources that might be helpful to the searcher. Um, so once they click on those organic websites, uh, of course, that is not free. Um, so sites cannot pay Google to be listed in a better position. It is all determined by an algorithm. And so what we see is how Google ads work. It starts with the search. Google creates the search results. Advertisers bid for opportunities to be shown in the ads. And then the winner actually appears with an ads label. To get started with Google ads, we would visit google.com slash ads. Um, click start now, sign into your Google account, and please make sure it's the Google account that is associated with your business. Um, because if you want to make sure that everything is under the business account and that you can access this, then just keep in mind that when you are signed into the Google, if you're signed into your personal, that is what's going to be attached to your Google ads. And so if your personal is not the Gmail that is managing your, um, your Google business profile or your search console or your Google analytics, then they won't be able to integrate that data, which they can if you make sure that you're using the same email across those platforms. Um, Google Ads will default to the smart mode, um, and that allows you to quickly set up your campaign, and it automates the ad management. So we would start with just adding our business name. Um, very simple. Once we add our business name, we then want to enter our website. So what we need to keep in mind here is that, yes, we want to enter our website, but this might not be your home page. So if this ad is specifically for barbecue sauce and someone clicks on it because they're ready to buy that barbecue sauce, if your web link sends them to your home page and now they have to figure out where the barbecue sauce is, you might just lose them. And so we want to make sure that the website that we're entering is the URL that takes them specifically to the page that we're advertising for. You are allowed um, to preview the landing page. So once you add in the website, you'll be able to see what that page will look like on both mobile and desktop. And then we would select our advertising goal. 
So with the advertising goal, we need to decide, are we using this ad to get more calls or do we want more people to sign up um, on our website or do we want them to just buy more products? Do we want them to come into the store? Um, but we need to know what our goal is for this ad. Um, you will be allowed to write your own ad. Um, this slide just shows you the fields that you'll fill out while you write your ad. Um, of course, an automatic character count will let you know how much space you have, and then you can preview the ad on the right side of the page once you're done. Um, well, actually, while you're doing it, you can actually preview it. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that you are able to add three headlines and two description lines. Um, and I would highly recommend if you are trying to make sure you fit in the most keywords and key phrases um, within the character count allowed, feel free to use the Google Bar tool to help you to do this. After you write your ad, um, you will be asked to add some keyword themes. Um, the smart campaigns use keyword themes to really help show your ads to the right searchers. So um, if you've ever done advertising on social media, you know that there is a way to do some targeted marketing. And so this is what this is. Um, this allows you to show, um, choose your keyword themes so that Google can show this ad to the right audience. Um, we want to not, we want to take the guesswork out of it. We want, don't want Google showing it to the wrong people because this is a pay per click. And so if someone clicks on it and we're not the right fit for them, we still have to pay for that. So again, we want to make sure that we're selecting the keyword themes that describe the focus of our ad, but not necessarily everything that our business has to offer because this is pay per click. Um, the next thing we'll do after the keyword things is we'll select the location and we'll decide where we want to display our ad. Um, so you'll get the options to include a radius around a specific address or a zip code, city, or region. And then we definitely want to set a budget. Um, you're able to select the budget option um, or enter your own budget. Um, so you will see that they will suggest some um, budgets for you, but you can enter your own. Um, and then you'll also be able to see an estimate of the monthly clicks. And then you can change or pause this at any time. But again, one thing, the biggest difference between Google ads and social media ads is that the Google ads are paid per click. Um, once we set a budget, then we'll be able to review the entire campaign. Um, once we set up all of those pieces, we review the accuracy, see if we need to change anything. We can definitely go back and make edits. Um, but this is where you do that before you go live. You want to make sure that you review everything before you go live. Because once you go live, of course, you can pause the campaign. Um, but we want to make sure that when we go live, everything is exactly how we want to present it to potential customers. So we talked about the five tools that you can use to help reach, your business, uh, reach customers online. And so now we'll talk about some resources that are available for you. So one of the resources is the um, YouTube channel. So we have a Grow with Google YouTube channel. It is updated every Thursday. And so if you want to learn more about a specific topic and maybe a live webinar or in-person session is not available anytime soon, you can definitely visit the Grow with Google channel and see those on-demand videos about specific topics. And we also have the Google Career Certificates. So, of course, no experience is necessary for you to do any of these certificate programs. It is a learn at your own pace. Um, there are opportunities for small business owners to get scholarships um, for their employees through the Google Career Certificates. So if you'd like to learn more about that, you can go to grow.google slash certificates. And on this next page, we'll um, just send you over to google.com slash growth because there are so many free online trainings and tools available for the categories listed. So if you're a teacher or a student, um, there are resources specifically for you. If you're a local business, of course, there are tools specifically for you. Job seekers and developers can also find tools um, at no cost available at the google.com slash growth. 
And then we definitely appreciate you spending this time with us today. Um, we will, I will look to see if we have any questions that we can address now. Um, but if you would like to meet us on our office hours, Joshua and Jared will be available on November 27th and 29th. And if you can't make the November dates, then I have um, a December option available for you. So you can scan any of those QR codes and we look forward to um, working with anyone who wants a deeper dive or just has questions about how they can implement any of these strategies that we discussed today or use any of these tools that we discussed. And let me hop on camera. Of course, we do have a survey. We would love to continue offering um, these workshops, um, but we need to hear from you. We need to know if you liked it, if you didn't, um, what would you like to see di done differently? Um, any suggestions that you might have, if you could scan that QR code and do the survey for us, we would greatly appreciate it. And Joshua, um, I'm not sure if we had anything in the chat that we um, needed to address. I'm just getting caught up. I know Jared was on answering some of the questions as well. Um, trying to see which ones he answered and which ones he did not get to. Um, Piper, uh, you have questions about getting reviews removed. Uh, can you be more specific? And you can, if you're able, you can huff and unmute yourself or you can put it in the chat. So can I, um, and Piper, I will say, um, just a disclaimer, Google will not remove a review just because it's, you know, not uh, pleasing to the business owner. Um, in order for a review to be removed, the only way it can be removed is if it violates the community guidelines set by Google. And so if it's just, you know, someone talking about an experience and you just do not want that um, promoted publicly, unfortunately, we can't get that removed if it does not violate the community guidelines. But if you do want to know whether or not it does violate the community guidelines, you can always report the review and then let the Google team look further into it to see if it violates any of the guidelines. And then if it does, it'll be removed. If it does not, then unfortunately we cannot. Get it removed. There is also the, another uh, type of review that can also be um, removed. Again, it takes a little bit more of a process here, but there is the occasion where people leave a review on the wrong business um, because it's, it falls under the same name and they were out of state or operating in a different state. Again, the only way that anything is going to be looked at with the review is if it's flagged and sent back to uh, Google with the reason why you are trying to have that removed. Again, Tier is correct. It's typically only because it violates one of their uh, policy. Um, but there are also other examples. Um, yeah, so I see it, it's a lie that the person never came to your business. And, and that's one of those tricky ones that sometimes is very challenging to prove. Um, what I often tell businesses is, is, you know, if you are out there, you are asking for more reviews and you are, you know, you are working to get those additional reviews, a negative review or a poor review from time to time is not going to have a drastic impact on your business profile or your overall review. Um, but again, depending on the situation, you can always try to, to flag it and then write your reasoning and why you'd like to have it reviewed. Um, but they are a little trickier to get those pulled down. Um, so William asked, what is the URL for the YouTube resource channel? So if you go to YouTube and you type in Grow with Google, it'll bring you up to the Grow with Google channel. Here, I'll pull that back up one more time there too. Okay. There you go. So it'd be youtube.com forward slash grow with Google. Thanks, Jared. Put up the QR code again for everybody. Were there any questions in the chat um, that we did not get to? I know Jared's been working hard behind the scenes to get answers to those. Um, uh, Pamela um, asked, do you see that here? Pamela asked, on Google Analytics, how do you create a custom report so you can track a certain landing page on your website? 
Okay. So that, I mean, we can do that. Um, it's several steps. We probably would need to share the screen and walk them through it. Um, I would definitely recommend for that question, um, since we do need to probably walk them through the steps, if you could come to our, our help sessions, um, then we can, you know, share our screen and do a little bit more um, because right now we have about seven minutes. Um, so we wouldn't have time to pull that up, but we can create custom reports in the analytics. Um, so we can set that up with you. On Google business listing updates, we can add photos and videos. What is the file size limit for video? Seems like even one minute videos are too big. Uh, yeah, with yeah. the Google business profile, 60 seconds is too much. It is, I believe it's capped to 30 seconds. It is. Yes. Um, so, and, and depending on the device that you are, the, the, the size of that file that you are capturing, again, there's a difference between 1080p, 4K, um, 8K. So you got to keep that in mind. Again, there is going to be a uh, actual limit i'm not do you know that off the top of your head tiara i know it's 30 seconds i just know it's a 30 second limit um i'm not sure as far as the size up oh, there we go jared to the rescue <laughs> 75 megabytes there you go thank you jared We have any more questions that we need to address? I'm, I'm going to add one thing. If there's anybody out there who is trying to get a business profile verified, since this was brought up about the Google business profile and the video, I know in that process, it'll tell you that you can upload a 60 second video for the verification process. I have, I don't know if it's a glitch in the system, if it works for, if it's the problem for everybody. I've had many businesses that when they try to, when they exceed 30 seconds there, the video never uploads. It kind of stalls out and it just continuously spins. So I also, when, once you drop that video down to 30 seconds or less for verification, again, it, it, it usually uploads without a problem. So if you're going through that process, just keep that in mind as well. Um, so William asked about um, how to make uh, short YouTube videos for your business. Um, and we do have workshops on how to use YouTube for your business, um, not necessarily how to make the videos, but of course, we can walk you through how to set up your YouTube channel and use the YouTube studio um, as well as upload um, videos. Uh, so what I would recommend doing for that, because all of the coaches do have different schedules, um, if you go over and I will, Jared, if you could drop the link to the Grow With Google workshops in the chat, um, and then that way you can see what all of the um, workshops are that are coming up through Grow With Google, and you can look specifically for how to use YouTube for business, um, because that is offered both in person as well as online. And I will say, William, I actually have a virtual workshop tomorrow at 9 a.m. for using YouTube to grow your business. Um, if you're interested, you could send me an email. I'd be happy to share that link with you. Actually, if I can pull that link up, I put it in the chat here if anybody's interested. Yeah, I'll put it in the chat. Um, while I'm doing that, uh, updates that Google deletes. Google was deleting posts on one of my businesses that was accepted on the other business. So typically if a post or like an update is deleted on Google business profile, there is something in there that is, um, again, kind of triggering uh, the Google bots that is, that's constantly scanning to make sure everything follows the policy and the uh, regulations. And it just, you never really know what it could be. Sometimes it's, it's by error. I have seen um, the most common one that I see that businesses have uh, updates or posts removed is if they include images that have phone numbers attached on the images. So like if they're trying to repurpose a poster or a flyer from an event, and if it has, if there's too much text on it or content on it, or if there's a phone number on it, I have seen that get deleted um, and pulled down. So it could, that could be one of the reasons, but without actually knowing the exact uh, post that was up to, uh, removed, it's hard to say what, what could have caused that one. And the reason why it might be accepted on one business and deleted on another is just the way it kind of goes through the checks um, uh, on the back end and what something was overseen and something got caught here and there. All right. I'm going to open up a different window here and try to get my link here.
So Vanessa asked about one-on-ones. Um, so we are offering group sessions. I know that we uh, here in North Carolina have been offering some one-on-ones, but we're actually booked throughout December um, for our one-on-ones. Um, but I would highly recommend at least coming to the group sessions um, because we can still, you know, address all of the questions from the people in the group. But if someone needs that, like I know with me on my December 4th, if I need to stay after a little bit to work with someone, I can. Um, but Joshua, are you offering um, any one-on-ones or would everything still be crude? Because I know we I are- still have, I still have time for one-on-ones I can usually fit in. So if there is a need for a one-on-one -on -one, uh, support, um, I can usually find, you know, 30 minute windows throughout the week. Uh, I reckon just the best thing to do is email me. We can kind of compare schedules. And everyone has our email address, so definitely feel free if you have any questions um, to, you know, email one of the coaches and we'll be sure to address those questions. Um, and then, of course, we have three group sessions that are open. So if you want to join us for one of the group sessions, we'd appreciate it. And the links, um, I don't know if we can go back to that link. Will, uh, will that slide? Uh, which which slide did you want me to go back to? Um, with the QR codes um, for our events. There, there we go. So if you did not get those um, QR codes, they are listed there. Um, we definitely appreciate everyone for joining us for this hour to talk about the top 10 tools to use for Google for both organization um, as well as to grow your business online. Uh, we look forward to connecting with you all via email as well as during our group sessions. Um, and Josh, was there anything you wanted to say before we hop off? No, I just thank, thanks everybody for their time uh, this evening. I hope everyone have a great evening and thank you for being with us today. Thanks everybody.